Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another um, space reaction, and this one is 10 scary yet beautiful facts about space and us. And I've been wanting to get back into space reactions or reactions to do with like space and planets and all this kind of stuff. And I was asking for suggestions in my last video. I, I was looking, I couldn't really see any specific videos. Maybe I just wasn't looking enough, which may be the case to be fair. But um, yeah, please under this, suggest some more space related reactions that I can do because I do really want to get back into it. I just don't know, maybe not space, maybe some science related to space, or just other things on that same kind of, like, um, topic. But I just want to get back into space for it. it in general, it's probably this, this sort of topic that I just blows my mind more than anything. Like, it's one of those things that just refreshes my mind, but also scares me. But overall, it's just incredible to learn about, because we're so sort of uneducated on how truly, like crazy the universe is how crazy the space is and just all that kind of stuff so if there is any other videos out there that you would like me to react to please suggest them in the comments because i really do want to get into more of these space reactions but yeah let's get into this one again i've said the title i feel like i've said the title already if i haven't i'm not even gonna say it because i feel like i have but yeah let's get into this one quick shout out to my instagram and my twitter we're closing on a 4k followers on instagram so i'd, I'd appreciate it if you followed me on there my patreon the support on the patreon has been <laughs> crazy so i mean if you're interested in seeing some patreon only reactions which is more videos that get blocked on youtube certain suggestions depending on the tier that's your place for that but yeah thank you for the people who've been supporting my patreon as well it's been crazy but let's get into this one let's see what this video has to say and yeah let's just get into this one i love space reactions so much man they're so just interesting like everything i react to is interesting but the space ones are just like they just literally just blow my mind to another degree it's crazy how much they in like just how much i don't know i guess you could say ten scary yet beautiful facts about space and us Number 10, right, here we, go. we are so small. We are so small. Before we can truly grab. Wait, so small. I just want to make sure I hear him. Before we can, we are so small. So small. Before we can truly grasp the gravity of the threats, as well as the beauty that surrounds our planet, we must first realize just how small our planet is. The circumference of Earth at the equator is about 24,874 miles, and from the North Pole. What the hell is. Oh, it sped up. I was like, why is it so, why does it sound so quick? And it sped up for some reason, that's my bad. Well, to the <laughs> South Pole, it is about 24,860 miles. Within our solar system, we are the fourth largest planet. After us, we are dwarfed by Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter, and our own star, which is 93 million miles away from us, the Sun. The sun is a pretty big star, but it's nowhere near the sizes of other stars that we know about. To this name just a few larger time, stars for perspective, there is Eta Carinae, a star that is over 5 million times larger than our sun. <laughs> Betelgeuse, <laughs> is 300 times <laughs> larger than Eta Carinae. If it were our sun, it would reach as far out as Jupiter. And then there's Uy Scuti, the largest star that we know of. UI Scuti's mass is unknown, but before UI Scuti comes VY Canis Majoris. I just have a question. I probably asked this in the last question, but because there's so many comments, I probably missed the maybe people answering my que answering my question. How, firstly, how do they know the actual size of this? I guess from pictures they can sort of scale like the distance and the pictures. They can sort of scale how big it is. But secondly, wait, what was, I forgot what I was going to ask now. <laughs> I literally forgot what I was going to ask. No, how, like, how is it actually possible for things to be this big? Again, this is going to come across as so stupid, yeah. But, like, I can't even comprehend how big Earth is, let alone our, our sun. Then this sun's probably, like, a million, billion, trillion times bigger than our sun. It's like, how can things possibly be, like, possibly be this big? I'm struggling to talk. And the scarier thing is, there's probably suns that are hundreds of times bigger than this as well. Like, I just can't wrap my head around how... Fucked spaces. It just a star blows me that away. Is five billion times the size of our sun. We are a part of the Milky Way galaxy. There are trillions of stars in our galaxy, and nearly all of them are circled by at least one planet. 
Within our Milky Way galaxy, we are not the only solar system. So far, astronomers have found more than 500 solar systems and are discovering new ones every year. Scientists estimate that there may be tens of billions of solar systems in our galaxy alone. Traveling out 150,000 light years, you can see just how small even stars like UY Scuti is within our galaxy. It takes our sun 200 million years to complete an orbit of the Milky Way. And 2.5 million light years away is the Andromeda Galaxy, estimated to collide with our own galaxy in a few billion years. And using the Hubble Deep Field, or HDF, we can see a very small series of space and observations by the Hubble Space Telescope itself. It shows hundreds of galaxies. Five billion light years out is the cosmic web, where billions and billions of galaxies are estimated to reside. And finally, 200 million light years out is the cosmic microwave background radiation afterglow, is what we believe that started us. The only thing estimated to be left of the Big Bang. What the fuck, man? That is our... I'm going to come across as so stupid again, which is just a common theme with these videos, but I, I used to think the Big Bang was just how how the Earth was formed. But I know, now I know it's not, obviously. But what actually was it? That, well, obviously some people believe different things, but um, how was Earth created? It was like two planets. I forget what two planets it was. When gravity pulls swirling gas. Because I used to always think the Big Bang was that, but I don't know how I even came to that conclusion. <laughs> I do not help myself. <laughs> the universe. What is beyond <laughs> this? Other universes? Immeasurable heavens. We have discovered less than 0.1% and have found no other life. I would argue less are than that. Are we all alone <laughs> in this life? Thing. Or are we in fact not alone? Either thought is terrifying. For now, all we know is that all injustices, political and religious existence theories or truths, all loves, sorrows, hopes and dreams, extinct species like the dinosaurs and species yet to come, all pasts, presents, futures, thoughts and actions only exist on our small and insignificant planet alone. Mate. This sort of scale, you truly start to Spin think about what truly Spin matters facts. to you, what doesn't matter anymore, and what never did. What do you think? Makes you think, bro. It does Number nine, think. rogue planets. They are the loners of the universe, lost forever in space without a star to orbit. When planets form, they react with each other gravitationally, and it's entirely possible that when our own solar system formed, planets were actually kicked out into interstellar space. There could be as many as 200 billion rogue planets in our galaxy. What? That's as many rogue planets as there are stars in the sky, and one of them could be heading our way right now as you're watching this video. <laughs> A collision with another planet sounds unlikely, could this really happen? As a matter of fact, it already has. Four and a half million yeah. years ago, a young planet about the size of Mars collided with Earth over 25,000 miles per hour, 12 times the speed of a bullet. The That's impact ridiculous. destroyed the smaller planet. Earth survived, but barely. Afterwards, the entire surface of Earth was liquefied. Nothing but rock, lava, and fire was left everywhere. A true vision of absolute hell, the Earth at that time had only an atmosphere of molten rock. Debris that was blasted out 20,000 miles per hour began to orbit the Earth. Gravity began to bring the debris together. And the result was our moon. What? Boy, that is crazy. That is Number absolutely... Eight, space to... Wait, imagine a planet just <laughs> hit us. Obviously, there's nothing we could do. We're worrying about, like, meteors and asteroids and whatever. Bro, a planet comes to hit us, we are done. <laughs> Again, we're two in and I'm already mind blown. These videos are... I need to see more of these, man, because they just make me... They just they make me happy but sad at the same time. Like he says, beautiful facts, yet scary. Green. 
Sooner or later, human civilization must confront the very real asteroid and comet collision hazard that exists within space, or we will become extinct. On June 14th, 2002, it was just another busy workday, with all the close calls and near misses that people all over the world have come to accept as the normal level of risk in everyday life. But on that day behind the sun, what no one saw coming and what no telescope could see behind the blinding light was an asteroid big enough to destroy an entire city. From behind the sun, asteroid 2002 MN came hurtling towards Earth, but it missed less than one third of the distance to Earth that the moon is. Jeez. Nobody saw it pass either until three days later, when it emerged from Earth's shadow into the night sky going away. Though what it is rare, hell? it is very possible. The craters on our moon are evidence of asteroids, comets, and general debris hazards that do exist for us today. Billions of rocky fragments, building blocks of a planet that never quite came together when the solar system was formed, are out there, everywhere, ranging in sizes from rocks to pebbles to boulders, and some the size of Mount Everest. The reason as to why we haven't had any truly devastating catastrophes with asteroids within the past few million years is mostly because of Jupiter. Occasionally, Jupiter's enormous gravity draws an asteroid off course, causing it to crash into another asteroid and be destroyed, or oh, wow. to veer away into new orbits. It was no secret that a giant rock smashing into Earth was what wiped out the dinosaurs, and that particular rock was estimated to only be six miles wide. He says only, I mean, I can see what he means, but it's still six miles wide. But I Number do get seven, what he's saying. Sounds of space. It's a oh, common really misconception weird, that there is no sound in space. Although space is a virtual vacuum, this does not mean that sound does not exist there. Sound does exist as electromagnetic vibrations. Through specially designed instruments such as the NASA Voyager, Engine 1, IC-1, and Hawkeye space probes, we have used plasma wave antennas to record vibrations all within the ranges of human hearing. Now I'm going to show you the sounds of our sun, as well as all of the planets within our solar system. And I really would like some input on what you guys think, especially about Venus and Saturn. Bro, this stuff is scaring me, man. What is that Red Bull guy? The guy who jumped from, like, space? I always think... Again, I've, I ramble a lot, I'm sorry. But I always think, like, what is the limit? Like, what point could you jump out of, like, um, like an aircraft or whatever and, like, guarantee you'll be falling onto Earth and back to Earth? Because I, would, I always sort of think and overthink sort of thinking, like... So think a lot there. Um, what if they jump out and because they're like they're in space, they get sucked into space? Like I just can't wrap my head around that. And I, I understand how it works. Like they're still in the atmosphere, but at what point are you not in the atmosphere? And then you're just gonna get like you're gonna jump out, but then you're gonna get sucked back into like back into like, back to into space. Like mate, I don't know how people have the balls for that, bro. I couldn't. I couldn't, man. Take a listen. Is this real? There's no way this is real. What the hell? Sounds windy as hell. Mars does. Bro, this is tripping me out, man. Tripping me out. Number 6. The Super Void In 2004, 
astronomers discovered an empty section of space within the southern area of the galactic hemisphere where our Milky Way solar system and the Andromeda solar system reside, and that empty space is missing around 10,000 galaxies. Nicknamed the Cold Spot, this area is 1.8 billion light years across, and it is the largest known structure ever discovered in the universe. But scientists are baffled about what it is and why it's so barren. It sits in a region of space which is much colder than other parts of the universe, and although it is not a vacuum, it seems in this constellation you can see superclusters of galaxies. The dark blue symbolizes areas that are more empty than others and much colder. The super void resides in the bottom right. The latest study of number five, the multiverse. Oh, when this the ancients looked incredible into the night man. sky, they believed that the heavens so revolved around the earth and mankind. But over the centuries, this view has changed drastically. We eventually learned about our solar system's existence and our Milky Way galaxy. Later, we discovered that our universe was filled with other such galaxies. But it could be that we're committing the same error as our ancestors by thinking that our universe contains everything that there is. Mm. The word multiverse refers to the general idea that our universe might not be unique at all, and there may be other universes out there that defy all of our laws of nature. What is known as the Anthropic Principle is the idea that our universe is fine-tuned to allow humans to live. A small fiddle with the strength of gravity, for example, and life as we know it would not exist. A coincidence that does not sit easily with scientists. The concept of a multiverse neatly addresses this problem. With the infinite number of universes that could exist, we are simply living in the one that we are only able to, meaning yeah. that other universes, depending on their laws of nature and physics, could have very different biological life forms or maybe even paranormal entities. And then there's this theory, which is quite hard to put into words, so I will just keep it short. There are many universes, and everything is the same inside each one, meaning you exist on every single Earth. However, each outcome of your entire life is different. Whether you fail school or become top of your class, the jobs you receive. What's this called? What's it called again? I know what he's saying, but there's a term for it. I know exactly what he's saying. Like, you do certain things in a different universe, but like, every outcome is the same or it's different. What is it called? Living in different... I can't think of it. I know exactly what... He's probably going to mention it now, actually. See? Hopefully. The people you love or lose and any decision you've ever made or chose not to make would have a different outcome throughout your life. But unfortunately, we are only one human with only one outcome on this planet alone, meaning we could never actually prove this multiverse theory to be true, because no matter what, we are stuck with the outcome that we're going to have on this mm. version of the universe. And the chances of one of those outcomes successfully proving this theory, unfortunately, are very remote. Number four, a supernova. A supernova is a massive explosion generated by a dying star. A star in our galaxy goes supernova once every 100 years. The explosion hurls matter into space and can shine as brightly as an entire galaxy for short periods. Wow, Stars crazy. are giant nuclear reactors producing energy by fusing hydrogen into helium. Eventually, however, stars run out of hydrogen to fuse. When this occurs, the star begins to fuse helium into heavier metals such as iron. The star's core shrinks while its outer layers expand, creating a red giant that consumes surrounding planets. But what happens when the sun runs out of helium? Fusion simply ends in small stars like our sun. The star becomes a white dwarf and slowly fades away, but when a large star depletes its helium reserve, the core collapses within seconds, causing temperatures in excess of 1 billion degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> the outer layers of the stars collapse as well, only to explode outward in a massive explosion known as a supernova. What's left of the star's core becomes a dense neutron star and forms a black hole, an area of such densely packed matter that not even light escapes its gravitational pull. After a supernova, material expelled in the explosion may form nebulae, which are massive interstellar clouds of gas and dust. Over millions of years, gravity pulls nebulae material together into a dense, hot core called a protostar. 
proto-stars eventually become newborn stars, and the newborn star's gravitational effects surrounding the nebulae material over time may form asteroids, comets, and even new planets. It is truly the circle of solar life. Madness, man. Three Number left three, still made. The dark flow. The, d- the no, eternal no. dance of light in the night sky has fascinated humankind for thousands of years, given birth to gods, myths, and finally to science. But now there are hints of strange movements in the heavens. If they can be verified, they will be the first hard evidence that there is an edge to the universe. Sasha Koshlinsky is a NASA astronomer. He claims to have detected a pattern of movements in the heavens so bizarre that it could revolutionize our theory on the universe, just as the Big Bang once did. Sasha wanted to check more precisely how fast and in what direction galaxies are moving to see if there might be any subtle deviations. He used an effect that can only be seen when clusters of galaxies are colliding. The gases around them get heated to millions of degrees. When light from the cosmic microwave background passes through a hot gas, it gets subtly altered. How much it changes depends on exactly how fast the gas and the galaxies it surrounds are moving. Sasha continually and methodically checked this data for over a year, and his data showed something unbelievable. All the galaxy clusters, no matter where they were in the sky, were all veering off to one side of the universe. It was as if they were being pulled towards a mysterious attractor beyond the visible edge of the universe. He called it Dark Flow. What do you think it is, and where is it pulling us to? Number two, supermassive black holes. Black holes are nearly every large. Black holes are the most interesting thing when it comes to space. They're just the ideas of them. Just it's just. The, the ideas in themselves are like what attracts me to them so much but like that sounds really weird attracts me but like the actual just like the concepts of like how scientists sort of guess what how they work but they don't truly know how they work like how they can take you to different universes or different sort of forces of life it's just like yeah black holes are different man it's just crazy how complex like complex they are but At the same time, it's just like crazy. Large galaxy, astronomers have found evidence of black holes millions, even billions of times the mass of the sun. As I spoke about supernovas in number four, black holes form from what is left of a star's core after it has gone supernova. The collapsed core of a dead star implodes and its weight is enough to squash all the atoms right down to their nuclei. The result? an ultra-dense ember called a neutron star. The density of a neutron star would be like taking a mountain and crushing it down with so much pressure into the size of a marble. Neutrons can withstand incredible pressures, but if enough matter falls onto them beyond a critical threshold, they can be crushed down to nothing. When that happens, a black hole is born. A black hole is gravity taken to the extreme. Its mass is literally packed into a point and enshrouded within a dark sphere called the event horizon. That sphere is the point of no return. Any gas, stars, planets, or even light that falls in disappears forever. Albert Einstein said that gravity is not just the attractive force of planets or stars like the sun. It is a warping of space and time what scientists call space-time, with the presence of massive objects. With the mass of a star squashed down to a deep point, a black hole is basically a deep puncture in space-time. If a future explorer prospecting for data tempted fate by traveling too close to a small black hole, they would be ripped to shreds immediately. However, a supermassive black hole has more spread out gravity. The ride would be much smoother. What you'd find if you made it inside is the most extreme destination in all of the universe. Mate, I can't imagine what that would be like. If you could somehow make technology that can experience what black holes are, which I assume we won't be be ever able to do. But if we could, mate, that would be crazy. That would be ridiculous. Number one, further speculations and philosophies. So what do we know? Honestly, not much, and won't, not for a long time at least. 
a time that expands so much farther after yours and my own lifetime. The real question is, is can we figure out everything there is to know before Earth is destroyed by some random, miraculous, terrifyingly beautiful act of this thing that we call the universe? After watching this video, look up into the night sky and allow yourself to see more than you did before. Do not feel small, insignificant, unimportant, or pointless. Instead, thank your eyes, your brain, and your body, your own silent companion throughout your life for allowing you consciousness at such an extraordinary time period where you and your fellow man can study these mysteries of existences that are so far away. And whatever you believe in, don't allow this video or others to ever discourage that belief, whether it be gods, science alone, aliens, the paranormal, or nothing. Instead, combine the knowledge we do know of with your own beliefs and theories to see what depths of your own mind you can then explore. We too, as human beings, are made up of the same stuff of galaxies. Maybe That's we're not supposed to- <laughs> That's crazy, we actually are mate. How? How the fuck? Oh my god. I'm literally the same as a black hole, just a couple more chemicals added, you know? That's fucked. Okay, okay, maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but the same chemicals, man. It's it's just... I can't, I'm sorry, I'm just I, I'm just lost for words whenever I see these types of videos, and it just ends up with me coming out with absolute nonsense, but it is just how my brain functions when I see this kind of stuff, man. It just... I don't know, I can't, I can't say. Now, maybe the true meaning of life, while you have it, is to simply give it some meaning. No, yeah, this is a really good video. Yo, shout out to this Thank guy. Thank you man. so. Link to his video in the description. This was an incredible, incredible video to see, man. I really, really enjoyed this. I don't know why, but this video made me very emotional. Space things scare me. Yeah, I'm watching this. Seven to what twenty one. One like one thanks to Jupiter. What if when when we pass away, we're actually just transitioning into another planet. This guy sounds like he's about to say goodbye. So goodbye, world. My time has come. Damn, I learned more from YouTube than I do in school. Me too, man. I hated school, bro. I hated school. Now on YouTube, when I learn this stuff, it's the most enjoyable time of my day when I can actually sit down and watch things, learn new things. And yeah, man, YouTube is just goated, bro. YouTube is goated, man. Don't ever say that we're alone in this universe. My head hurts from thinking about everything in this video. Me too, bro. I feel that. I'm upset that I won't be able to be alive to see the day where all the questions are answered. If YouTube was a school, we would get a degree in a week or less. Whenever I watch these videos, I can only think of death. And I thought the pimple on my forehead was big. <laughs> bro, I feel that right now. Not on my forehead, but on my chin, bro. I feel that. That hit me different. After I watch this, I can't stop thinking about the truth. But yeah, man. Honestly, incredible, incredible video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. And like I said at the start, please link me some more space-type reactions. I want to get back into the space videos, man. I love these videos so much. And I just sort of struggle with which ones to watch and like react to next. But... Yeah, hopefully you guys will come with the suggestions. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.